Welcome to another episode of Modern Rock. Yeah, so today's video, I think I'm going to be going through kind of like my predictions for how teams are going to be performing in the pools, the semi-final, possible semi uh, quarter and semi-final places, and the possible final. Obviously, this is based on performances going to the World Cup, rankings, and various other methods and ways teams perform against each other in the different st uh, stations. This is obviously my opinion, taking in some stats from various sources, um, a little bit of mathematics involved, but overall just my opinion. So please don't get offended if I don't pick your team. Please don't get offended. Uh, please don't assume you're going to win if you do. Uh, if I say you are, this is just a guessing game with a little bit of math. So yeah, I want to just, uh, let's obviously start with just looking at the different pools where I believe each team will end up, uh, especially the top two being obviously the most important. Um, it gets a lot tougher lower down the rankings, I have to admit, but let's see how we get through. So obviously pool A is Ireland, Scotland, Japan, Russia, Samoa. So this is a bit of a tough one, but I don't, well, for the rest of the teams. Uh, the first, I think it's almost certainly Ireland taking the top of the cake in this pool. They've really been consistent. They've got strong teams and they really, as I've said in previous videos, are great at um, making, forcing a team to play their style of rugby. And that's essential when winning games, especially in World Cups. Scotland and Samoa are probably my bigger question marks on uh, who's going to take the second spot. Scotland have had some good games and some horrific games this year. They are a topsy-turvy team that really anything can happen. And that's where I think the question mark comes in. They've at least got the experience of playing strong teams regularly in the Six Nations and regularly play them warm-up games and that, which is, I think, a powerful benefit and the experience of the teams around them in the UK and obviously Europe. So I'm going to pip them over Samoa, although Samoa, on the other hand, are a team that... If they, can, if they can get you to play their style, they have a hard time doing it sometimes, but if they get you to play their style, they will beat you. They will kill you right there. They are at outstanding at finesse, outstanding at the popping game. Um, really, really showcase. And I feel probably them and Fiji are the origins of the New Zealand game um, that we see today. So never count them out. Samoa really are a beautiful team to watch and an exciting prospect. I think Japan um, and Russia will take the last two, but obviously then, so I say Scotland, the third Samoa, barring some shock results, some good results there, either go, could go either way. But then uh, Japan and Russia bottoming out. Russia are lucky to be in this World Cup, honestly, so I don't think they're going to showcase, whereas Japan are really going to have a push to show their class of rugby. I mean, I would love to see them go through to the quarters. I think it'll be a tough ask. But you never, you can never discount a home advantage. So all the best to Japan in the World Cup. I think Russia will finish bottom though. There's just, it's just they were too lucky to get into the World Cup, barring some question marks on other teams and that. That I don't think they're going to be able to really showcase the quality that needs to be there. In the pool B, we've got New Zealand, South Africa, Italy, Namibia, and Canada. So, um, in my opinion, the top two spots are pretty. Sure, although to be fair, South Africa has a horrible lab considering last World Cup of throwing away games against poor teams, well, poor, low, lower ranked teams. So I hope we'll see how that goes. But New Zealand, um, South Africa should make up the top two. I'm going to take New Zealand as taking number one and South Africa as taking number two. Uh, never discount a New Zealand in a World Cup. And obviously previous results, everybody questioning it. But that's for, I don't believe it. You don't, you're not number one for almost 10 years without uh, being outstanding and being able to figure out how to bring it back. So they are definitely maybe question marks, maybe not the top they've been in the last 10 years, but still a world-class team, if not still the best team in the world, barring world ranking saying slightly different. South Africa then taking second. Um, Italy will, I think, should relatively comfortably take that third spot. Uh, it's sad for them. They've had a good Six Nations, relatively good. But unfortunately, the experience playing against some of the best teams in the world in the Six Nations hasn't truly grown their team. But I mean, I think that's not completely uh, their fault. It isn't a massive sport there, but it's growing fast, and that's always good to see. So I think they're going to definitely have good showings, good wins against Namibia and Canada, most likely. So I definitely look forward to seeing them play. And they do play a very interesting style of rugby with some really great legends in their team. Namibia and Canada. This was a very tough one to choose between. Namibia has got some stunning players who, who regularly play in South Africa in the provincial teams uh, in Curry Cup and sometimes Super Rugby level, 
but unfortunately, as a prof as a professional national team, rarely get to play together, and this really affects their performance. They've had over the years many many quality players that have re uh, that are individuals amazing, but as a whole unit, a hard time to really put something together. Canada, on the other hand, does have the benefit of playing against USA relatively regularly and also against Argentina sometimes, and have the, has that. They also have a bit of a a bigger budget in the sense compared to Namibia, although Canada does have a, the, the biggest disadvantage that for some odd reason, all of their teams, their whole team has to be based in uh, one city, so they have a small pool to pick from because only players who are really willing to move to the to, to that city to actually be able to play causes some real, I think, detriment to their national team. Hopefully that can be sorted. There's also been huge question marks on um, the coaching staff and changes, So and they haven't had a great lead up to the World Cup, so we'll see how it goes. They have made it there, so I think that Canada will take it over Namibia, but it is a very, very touch and go situation. So Pool C. Pool C is very interesting. Um, probably the toughest pool I think that we've that this World Cup is going to offer. Um, really could bring some surprises, some interesting challenges. So yeah, let's get into it. So obviously, Pool C is England, France, Argentina, USA, and Tonga. Uh, between England, France, Argentina, and USA, there's a lot of competition for that top spot. It's going to be quite the fight. Um, I think just edging it, England are definitely going to be uh, the stronger team, just with Eddie Jones there and. The consistency they showed last year, I know that they might have had a little bit of a topsy-turvy this year, but a lot of changes have been made. They had a good performance against Wales two weeks ago. Yes, maybe not didn't win this last week, but this year, it's always tough to gauge in the World Cup year how teams perform until the World Cup. They're always trying new things, focusing on new ideas. So I think there's never never one to, I'm never one to discount Eddie Jones. He's heard South Africa before, and he's brought a lot of teams to to. Uh, prominence, Japan being one of them, South Africa of 2007 being one of them, so um, I think there's, there's a lot of hope for them and they definitely uh, should take that top spot, barring any major upsets. Um, so then the fight is then between France, Argentina and USA for that third spot. USA always surprised me in World Cup years, their sevens team this year has killed, um, they've come out of nowhere to take the top spot, really stunning and they've gone from leaps and bounds, so if this 15-man team can take anything from their 17-man team, I'm saying seven man team, they'll really have a lot of power. So I don't discount them. They always have some amazing players because they've got such a wide and varied player pool. So um, don't discount them. They just have lack, I think, the true togetherness of a full professional team still. So I think it's a couple of years. So I don't think they'll take this second spot, but I think there's a good contender. France and Argentina are definitely going to be fighting it hard. Argentina's Jaguar's team in the Super Rugby, effectively the same team as what the Pumas are going to be fielding, is outstanding. And on their, on their day, could beat any team in the world. Argentina, on the other hand, have had a little bit of a weak rugby championship, not able to get their scrums together, not able to get their consistency together, which worries me. But I think they are growing and they are, I think they're going to be definitely, if they can just find all the right beats, this last game against South Africa as the friendly was quite interesting and I think they showcased that there is a lot of gas in them. So I think, um, never want to discount them. I think they definitely will bring forward, as long as they can sort out their scrums, which they did to perform much better uh, this last weekend, uh, they will definitely be one of the team that, that they'll definitely put, give France a big run for their money and even England, in my opinion. France, on the other hand, is one of those teams that, <sighs> World Cup years are their years. Um, they are always based on a World Cup. So um, it'll be very interesting to see how that plays out. They uh, are definitely up and down. They've had a, a mediocre rugby uh, Six Nations, so we'll see how they play out. But between them and Argentina, both of them aren't at their full potential, and we'll love to see them uh, if they can showcase that in the World Cup. I'm going to give it to Argentina, uh, just because I think that they haven't shown their truth potential yet in the rugby championship and should take that second spot for um with england taking number one the rest of the pool most likely then look france usa and tonga uh that's how i believe it playing out uh pool d so pool d is interesting with australia wales georgia fiji and uruguay um i think this is a little bit of a the real teams to contend for those top two spots are really australia wales and fiji australia um have shown Promise and then complete disarray at different stages this year. They've had a relatively okay Super Rugby. 
um, some controversy behind the field, some uh, the camp I think is not at the right position. Uh, Michael Cech is having a bit of a hard time pulling together a proper team. They have some of the best players in the world, but don't seem to be able to gel. So I'm hoping that they can figure it out for the World Cup. That in, that New Zealand win, um, I think, will go down for all of those Australian players as a way to build their team together. Yes, they were pretty much annihilated this last weekend, but I don't think that'll take away from their win. They definitely uh, deserved it. They played outstandingly, and hopefully they can tap more into that and bring consistency to the forefront because that's their biggest problem. Right? They can have some of the best games or worst games, depending on the play, depending on if players play outright uh, in their positions. Otherwise, they seem to fall apart if the if their key players do not perform. So, hoping they can sort that out. On the other hand, Wales world number one. Um, I. For that, I think they're going to take the soft spot. Still, what an amazing year for them. Um, not an amazing year last year, average year last year, but this year, Warren Gatland has really come up with a team of note. So I, I think that they will always show their biggest problem, and the biggest problem Wales has in every World Cup, and they've always been a very strong contender team, is depth. So Wales has a big issue with depth, obviously, because they've got such a small player pool, such a small uh, group of players to pick from it really affects them so barring some crazy injuries or anything like that i think wales will be a strong contender for this whole world cup i just hope that they can keep their top players in top form so we'll see how it goes and i'm holding thumbs for them as a team so i'm going to give them the top spot with australia taking number two um but fiji on the other fiji really really can bring a game on their day so i'm hoping that they can really showcase as i feel unfortunately they lose a lot of players to New Zealand and even Australia, which is unfair for their player pool, something South Africa contains with anyway. But yeah, I think that hopefully, I really would like them to have a strong showing in the World Cup. So I'm going to give them a third spot with Tong, well, with um, Georgia and Uruguay making up the end of the pool. Georgia have always been a great team to watch, really the bastions of rugged rugby um, and always fun to watch how you, uh, the true dominance of a forward pack focusing on a forward pack team. Um, I think that fortunately professionalism has hurt. They're not able to grab into the professionalism like many of the other teams. And I'm hoping they can show that Uruguay, an outlier, and it's good to see them in the World Cup. Always good for them to have their ability to play and showcase their ability so they can grow their rugby back home. So all the best to them. So let's get to the quarterfinals. The quarterfinals I think are going to be quite interesting. I'm, I'm predicting, based on my predictions and based on my results, I'm going to say that... Um, England odds will be the first quarter final. That's obviously the winner of Pool C versus the runner up in Pool D. Um, I will talk about each of them afterwards. I'm just going to go through kind of like the, the quarterfinals I've picked. Quarterfinal two most likely will be New Zealand versus Scotland. That's now taking into account a winner of Pool B versus poor winner of Pool A. Uh, quarterfinal three would be Wales France, uh, with that being the um, I mean, Wales, Argentina, with that being the winner of Pool D versus the runner up of Pool C. And then quarterfinals will be Ireland, South Africa. Um, pool A, winner of Pool A versus runner up in Pool uh, B. So, some interesting games here. The England Australia game, I think, could topple either of these teams' World Cups. Both of them, I think, are going to come in here uh, and showcase what they can do. The, the biggest thing here being England had to fight through quite a tough pool to get there and could d diminish their team, whereas I think Australia, barring the Wales game, should have a relatively comfortable lead in um, could, and could lead to some complacency. As I said, Australia is all about the game on the day, and they've shown that in every World Cup, they're a World Cup team, so um, they perform better in World Cups than any other time, and um, I wouldn't discount them. I'm going to give the win to England just because I feel they have a better consistency uh, record and it's all about consistency World Cup as I've said multiple times Then quarterfinal two New Zealand Scotland. This is for me unfortunately a pretty comfortable one I think New Zealand are going to take it comfortably and take it there It's just unfortunately Scotland just don't have the manpower to overcome a team of that of, of New Zealand's quality uh, Although I'd love to see what Scotland can do I mean if that's the beauty of World Cups anything can happen in every team and every team who takes part can win it That's beautiful Quarterfinal three, uh, Wales Argentina. So Wales Argentina uh, would, is going to be an interesting one. Although I think Wales will just definitely have the manpower and the the the, the, the attacking prowess to take it. And if unless the Jaguars team 
that the playing style and the quality from Super Rugby comes forward, Argentina are going to have a hard World Cup. They really haven't been able to let's set the world on fire. Some good moments. I mean, that New Zealand game in the beginning of the Rugby Championship was strong, but they could not piece together a consistent performance. So that's where I think they need to figure out. They've had some moments of glory and greatness, but really, in my opinion, haven't been able to figure out how to put the team together. So hoping that can sort out. Wales, on the other hand, have had a stunning year, and um, I think everything is leading up to this World Cup. It just seems to be coming together for them beautifully, and I, I look forward to seeing that. Um, then the last one, Argentina will be quarterfinal four with, uh, oh, well, the winner there for quarterfinal four most likely. <sighs> That's a tough one. Uh, based on world rankings, this is probably the closest two teams will come together from facing, a world, um, facing each other in world rankings as being one is third and one is fourth. Um, I don't know. This one, I'd say, is going to be a toss of a hat. As a South African supporter, obviously, I'd love South Africa to win. As an, but Ireland, Ireland have had some amazing games and definitely deserve to continue. So it'll be sad to see one of these teams get knocked out by this game. I'm going to give it to um, Ireland just because of world ranking, uh, consistency and performance over the last two years. South Africa is only really building up now. Uh, but anything can happen on the day. For now, I'm going to give it to Ireland as I think that they are definitely... At the moment, the more well-rounded team with South Africa is still finding their feet. And it all depends on those first few games in the World Cup, who's going to be able to showcase their best foot. The other part of what I feel is could be an interesting thing is uh, both of these teams have, barring the one other big, like Ireland, in my opinion, have the easiest pool of the tournament. Not to bring down anybody else in the tournament or any kind of team in the tournament, they have the easiest pool in the tournament, in my opinion. So that would definitely... Uh, give them a, maybe give them a sense of complacency, which could hurt them a lot. And I hope they don't have that happen to them. South Africa, on the other hand, have a massive game, but after that, relatively um, should be easy games. So uh, also could lead to it. So both teams could suffer from that, and that'll be interesting to see how they, uh, how the coaches and the managing management staff counter it. That leads us to the semi-finals. So that obviously means that England, New Zealand, uh, semi-final one, and so that semi-final two, Wales, Ireland. Uh, this would definitely lead to quite an interesting one as we have for the first time, I think in a long time, if ever, um, a four-way Northern Hemisphere's um, semi-final, uh, three, three teams, three Northern Hemisphere semi-final with one uh, Southern Hemisphere, which showcasing again the growth of Northern Hemisphere, although to be fair, I am of the, on, on the fence of Northern Hemisphere has always been very strong. They just maybe had a different playing style where they have started to adapt to uh, playing more like Southern Hemisphere teams. Uh, which is very interesting to see. Um, so yeah, the first game semi-final New Zealand England. England have had a great performances. Uh, they definitely would have been great to see England in the tops of last year play New Zealand to see their true quality. Uh, could they topple the giant, the, the world, the world's best? Well, last week's world's best. But um, I'm going to give it to New Zealand. Uh, yes, they may not at the tops they ever been, but uh, never discount a New Zealand team, especially. Uh, with that, the, the current rate they're going, and I mean they're going to fight hard to get that that title. So it'll be interesting to see. But I'm going to give it to New Zealand, just because of the fact that they are they they know how to close a game better than any team team in the world. Uh, on the other side, uh, semi final two Wales Ireland. Sad to see, and also very interesting that my semi finals pretty much takes up the British and Irish Lions team. So um, shows you the quality of the power of the team that can go through. To be fair, New Zealand by themselves drew against that team, so wow, can show you the, the quality of that side. But anyway, Wales, Irish, Ireland, um, what a game, what a game. But I think I'm going to give it to the Welsh just because of the last year's, last six months performances um, and the growth. At the biggest worry for Wales, and I can guarantee you now, is going to be how many players, how much of their team is still at full strength at this point in the tournament. They don't, in my opinion, have the depth that they need to win a World Cup. So that's going to be the big factor. Saying that, Ireland, I think, have a similar problem. So I'm still going to give it to Wales. Um, and it'll be interesting to see who what really happens there. So my final, then, obviously, New Zealand-Wales. Um, damn, what a game. Uh, I never thought I'd be saying this six months ago to a year ago, I have to admit. I think Wales have really showcased what you can do to prepare for a World Cup and the quality. Um, I'm going to 
just and literally this maybe the analyst in me is quite disappointed in myself but i'm going to give it to wales because i don't want new zealand to uh coast to another world cup i'd love to see a great performance a great battle the, te the, the team of the day both those teams deserve to win the world cup so either way will be the right way um the what performance of wales going forward uh going for this year will be is, is, is mesmerizing but i think their biggest uh, uh, Penalty is going to be their depth in that in that final game. So if they can counter that, they deserve to win the World Cup. But yeah, guys, that's my predictions, my ideas. Please comment down below on your opinions, your things. Obviously, as I said, this is just my opinion and not the law. So please give me your opinion and your comments down below. Please like and subscribe and yeah, follow my videos. Thank you.